Hey everyone, we are live at five. It is Wednesday because I just saw people outside coming out of the matinee and cheering for everyone coming out of the prom, which is really, I saw yes, a lot of cheering at the prom that. when I walked by. It's Wednesday, December 5th. I'm Paul Wontor. And I'm Ryan Lee Gilbert. And over there is Caitlin Moynihan. Hello. Hey, two of our favorite two songwriters favorite and personalities yes. are here today. Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman. Woo! You know their right. music. You love their music. Uh, the and uh, Mary Poppins Returns. Mary Poppins it's Returns. It's coming out, I think, the next week year. in movie theaters. It's yeah. fantastic. And Absolutely. they wrote all the new songs, and we're going to talk about it. But today's top five is first. And the torch is officially passing on. Yes, Harvey Firestein's torch song is going to be closing at the Helen Hayes Theater on January 6th. 2019. It's a limited engagement, but it is closing a little bit earlier than originally announced. It was going to run through February 24th, but now you have until January 6th to see Torch Song. It's absolutely incredible. We're big fans of Torch Song here. Um, but in some good news on top of that, Michael Yuri, who of course plays the lead role of Arnold Beckoff in the show, he is going to be taking the show on the road. He'll be leading the national tour, which is set to kick off next fall, so fall 2019, and they are going to begin at the Amundsen Theater in Los Angeles before they hit cities all across the country, which is very exciting for those who aren't able to come here to see it off-Broadway at Second Stage Theater or to be able to see it on the Great White Way at the Helen Hayes Theater. I still love that the Falsettos tour is kicking off in Arkansas. I can't In up. Arkansas, <laughs> not, yes, I'm of not. course. <laughs> this is a little more L.A. I mean, L.A., yeah. they're going to love it. That's, they're going to yeah, love so it. That's a good, but yes. So uh, the show will have played 77 regular regular performances at the time of its closing. An incredible production, if you have the time, go see it before it leaves. And this Tony winner got a brand new gig. I didn't see this coming. This, this is so exciting. This is like one of those things that we would like make up on a feature on the site yes. and never actually happen. Yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Annalie Ashford will play Judy Holiday in a motion picture biopic. Yes, smart That's blonde. fun. Uh, yeah. Judy Holiday, you guys, is a Tony and Oscar winner. I'm I'm a little obsessed with Bells Are Ringing, which is I saw one of that her, you big, mentioned that, one of her yeah. big triumphs. <laughs> uh, but also Born Yesterday, of yes, course, was, was sort of her big thing. Winnie Holtzman is writing the screenplay. Um, oh, no, no, it's not Winnie. It's Wile, Wiley Holtzman? Wiley. Wiley. Oh, I'm sorry. Wiley. Not Wicked's Winnie Holtzman. <laughs> her brother Wiley. No, I don't know. Based on his stage play. So it's a play now, and it's becoming a movie, and it will center on her rise from nightclub singer to Oscar and Golden Globe winner for her turn as Billy Dawn in Born Yesterday, which probably means there won't be any bells are ringing in it, Paul. Get over it. <laughs> Maybe they can work it in somehow. Annalie Ashford, we love her. We love her. Tony Award winner, Annalie Ashford. Uh, she's a friend of the site. Um, yes, American that's right. She won a Tony, story. but you can't take it with you. Uh, yeah. She was in Kinky Boots, Sign the Park with George, Legally Blonde, Sylvia, and Wicked, which is the Winnie Holtzman connection, there which doesn't mean <laughs> anything. There. And of course, she was in Masters of Sex on Showtime. Yes. And the upcoming Unbelievable. What's that? I'm not sure what that okay. is. No, I don't I'm know. I'm excited. I yeah. She, she was, was also... just at the share opening. Yes. Yeah. And she was on American Crime Story, the assassination of Gianni Versace. Absolutely. She, she was. was. So yeah. And she, she was like the, um, she was his the friend. friend of Darren. Yeah. Chris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, oh, the play was called Smart Blonde. Mm -hmm. uh, it was at 59 East 59. Well, it's going to be there, it's going right? To be, Wait yeah. a minute. What? Oh, Andrea yeah. Burns is playing Judy Holiday? Yeah. I should Look read these things before. No, that's, before I you know, do just this. to kick up some excitement. So Andrea Burns is. Oh, well, that's exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Cool, awesome. So you can see the play first, and then you can see the movie. Go see the movie. And schoolgirls are going to be able to experience schoolgirls. This show just keeps on kicking, man. So of course it had it its original run, and then it went away, and it came back, and it will be wrapping up its second iteration at the Lucia Lortel Theater off-Broadway on December 9th. It will end its run there, but if you never got a chance to see the Jocelyn Bios play, it is going to be filmed by WNET-TV, which is a public television station channel available. Channel 13, right? Yes, Channel 13, okay. that's right. It's available in the New York metropolitan area, also in New Jersey. Um, they are going. It's going to be aired on the public television program Theater Close Up at some time in 2019. We mm -hmm. don't know exactly when yet, um, but of course this return engagement began in October, it closes on December 9th. Everyone that sees it loves it, raves about it. True. Jocelyn Bio is incredible, um, so that's really exciting news. And this Broadway-filled upcoming TV show just keeps getting better. Well, so this is a show that we just keep hearing about, The Politician. Yeah. Yes, for because, several reasons. Well, because yeah. first Ben Platt 
signed right. on, and then Laura Dreyfus signed on. Yeah, and then it's also Ryan Murphy's like his move to Netflix. This is his first thing, right? With exactly. Netflix. Um, and so Jessica Lange mm-hmm. has joined the cast. Part of Ryan Murphy's. Yeah. Cadet. So she won Emmys for American Horror Story and the Grey Gardens movie, which is which was which really good. So uh, Oscar winner for Tootsie, Tony winner for Long Day's Journey and Tonight. Look at the range from yeah. Tootsie to Long Day's remember, Journey and Tonight. Do you remember when they first started talking about this project, Barbara Streisand was in Oh, that's about, right. This is the Barbara Streisand role. She had to drop out because she, or she wasn't able to participate because she wanted to work on her album. So they turned to Jessica Lange, which, yeah, She's, you're going to turn to somebody. She's still working on the album. Yeah. The album came out. She could do it. Maybe. I but I'm know. excited I, I Jessica Lange's schedule. doing it. Yes, absolutely. I love yeah. Jessica Lange. Uh, and apparently, the series is expected to feature musical numbers throughout yeah because the the other glee guys signed on ian brennan and brad Fulcheck, they have now signed on to participate in the show so there are going to be musical numbers throughout you should have done this story you know a lot about it it's anyway i want to see it yeah. i'm gonna watch it i'm gonna binge it that's all i know <laughs> absolutely and you've only have a few weeks left to meet daniel's husband Yes, this Dan- time of year is so sad. It's I just know. like a closing Some of these notice. Stories a day. are like this is your last chance to see this. Yeah. Um, um, but this is you're coming up on your last chance to see Daniel's husband at Off Broadway's West Side Theater. This uh, production began as a primary stages production at the Cherry Lane Theater, and then it moved to the West Side. Um, it is closing on December. 30th. So you don't have much time left to go check it out. Um, this is Michael McKeever's play. It, of course, stars Ryan Spahn, Matthew Montalongo, Anna Holbrook, Leland Wheeler, and Lou Liberator. Um, it began previews in October, closes on December 30th. So after Christmas and before you have your New Year's, Year, New Year's Eve celebrations, go check out Daniel. I just want to say one more time, Tony nominated Lou Liberator for Burn Less. Because yes, you're when, absolutely when we first, right. When Beth and I were discussing that at the time, and I said, he's a Tony nominee, and she didn't know, and then he was on Twitter. He's like, yes, I was a Tony nominee. <laughs> Hello. Yes, yes. So uh, that's it. That's it for me. Awesome. Thank yeah. you for stopping Thank, by. You know what? It's my pleasure. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you tell us about Mark and Scott? Gladly. So we have Mark Shaman and Scott Whitman here. They're going to be talking all about Mary Poppins Returns. They wrote the score and nine original songs for the upcoming film. Mark is a composer and co-lyricist of the movie, and he is a Tony, Grammy, and Emmy Award winner. And he has multiple Oscar uh, nominations for um, his composing and his lyrics for Hairspray, South Park, and Saturday Night Live. You hear that? All he needs is that Oscar for that EGOT. Uh, Scott is the co-lyricist assist for the movie and he is a Tony winner and three time enemy nominee whoa Emmy nominee for his work on Hairspray Smash and more uh, follow Scott on social media at Scott Whitman and Mark at Mark Shaman and leave all of your questions in the comments down below please welcome Scott Mark and Paul hi guys hi, Paul. Oh. God, when you, it's all awards I know all awards and nominations it's pretty and in here I yeah. forget how fancy yeah, you two are. It's very pretty in here. Oh, thank you. It's look, it looks like I got high on Pepto Bismol. <laughs> <laughs> we could change the colors. If you no, want. I love it. You could swap it out to a different color oh, if you want. I love it. Uh, how are you guys? Good. good. How's Tired. it feel? Uh, so this movie, this is not actually your movie, but this is a book about your movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, practically Poppins in every way. This yes. is a very. Did you look at this book? It's, it's actually fabulous. Yeah, it's really look, it's pretty, about everything having to do with pretty. Mary Poppins yeah, from the very first. I saw the movie. Richard Sherman gave us one. Yeah. Richard Sherman oh. he wrote, the, of wrote the Sherman Brothers. Wow. <laughs> he gave you the book? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, that's good. Because Fancy. So, okay, well, we've got to talk about them because uh, the Sherman Brothers obviously famously wrote the, the songs to the original Mary Poppins, and I've, I've heard you say you're obviously fans yes. of their work. Uh, um, it's an iconic movie musical. A lot of people say they sort of fell in love with you know, movie musicals and musical theater because of this movie. It's one of those movies. Uh, so was that daunting? To be like, yeah, we're the guys. To Beyond be the belief. Well, it was. It was <laughs> terrifying. But it was actually probably the reason we got the movie to begin with was that Rob Marshall, uh, we all had the same reaction to the first film. Yeah. So we had a passion for it. And it was probably the first movie that um, you know, made me aware of musicals and 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 it's probably the first movie i actually saw in a theater so it it was a, that was all in the dna of it mm-hmm. and i know that um i actually interviewed rob a few days ago uh-huh. and i know that um he and john deluca they they are credited with the story they actually this 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 is completely original which is obviously very yeah exciting. yeah yeah i mean we all we all met in a hotel room 
Uh, not the way that sounds. Yeah. That's not Harvey how we got the job. <laughs> that was after we got the job. Not anymore. Yeah, there was no Harvey Weinstein. Yeah. But no, uh, we um, we all met in a hotel room, John, DeLuca, Rob Marshall, and David McGee. Mm -hmm. And uh, we sat in for like maybe three months, I think, three or four months. You were in months. that room for three months? Yes. yes. Well, I mean, off and on. Okay, like yeah. yeah. you came and got you. Two or three times a week. <laughs> and, and we carved it all out. It was fantastic. I mean, David and Rob and John had the kernel of the idea before we came in, and then we constructed the house, you know. And and then after three, we played what if for, for three months. Yeah. yeah, and we placed it all together, and then we had to go off and write it. That's the harder part, right? Uh, and that was where we sing that song oh. that we sing whenever we start a project. Oh. Paralyzed with fear, paralyzed with fear. Can we just sing that for a few, four or five days? It's one of my favorite epic yeah. compositions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> In this case, we decided to turn our fear into the love of the Sherman Brothers and the first movie, and we realized that we had this fantastic opportunity to say thank you to them all, to write a love letter to them, while also trying to continue the story and write as we write, Mm -hmm. But we come up from, you know, the Sherman Brothers and Mary Poppins is just in our blood and our DNA. So it can't help but feel like it belongs in the same street, uh, Cherry Tree Lane. Well, as Lynn manuel puts it the best, he's, uh, of course. <laughs> he said that um, uh, this movie, uh, the, the sequel rhymes with the first mm. film. Mm. And sequel is very important where somehow two years ago when they first announced it, People kept thinking it was a remake. How dare you oh. remake we like Mary Poppins? I would, no one would. That would be yeah. sacrilegious, wouldn't it? So, yeah, yeah, no. Yeah. And still, yeah. I see people. I'll you can go. You can enjoy. I'm glad you enjoyed it, but I'm not seeing it. Like, <laughs> so yeah, actually, we're 25 years ahead. The first movie was in yes, 1910. Yes. I looked up these exact numbers today. It's brand to be an Englishman in 1910. 10. King Edward's on the throne, and it's the age, age of men. men. I, now it's 1935, we're in the Depression. <laughs> uh, Lynn manuel Miranda, who you already mentioned, he plays a lamplighter, uh -huh. and he knew Bert. They, they knew each yes, other. Yes, he was an apprentice. He was an apprentice Bert. to old Bert. Right. Yeah, as a child, he worked for Bert. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, Mary, of course, comes in, and it's the Depression, and the kids need her, and it's beautiful. It's a, it's actually like a really beautiful... So, you, you've seen it. You've seen, seen it. it. Oh, wow. I okay. saw it last week. Oh, fantastic. You guys can write some like tunes. <laughs> I loved it. I mean, it really captures that, you know, that movie. It, it, you know what it immediately reminded me of? It reminded me of movies that, when I was a kid, that I saw around the holidays that meant so much to me that were like yeah. these big movie releases. Right. Yeah. And I thought, this is going to be one of those movies. Now, for me, it was Popeye and Annie. Okay. You're young, you never know though what's going to get a kid's yeah. you know what's going right. to spark a kid but the, but I and like the course line movie was so important to me when I first saw mm -hmm. it because it was just people doing musical theater stuff sure. yeah, yeah, you know sure, what I mean sure. and and now that I'm an adult I can look at them differently <laughs> but it, but uh th th this this definitely outweighs some of those other projects <laughs> this is a beautiful I think a new classic and and so it's really and and your score this is a real Musical. I mean, from like top to bottom. Yeah, no, it was we. You know, Rob and John come from the theater, so it was constructed that way. It really was. I mean, every song had to move the story along, and uh, uh, you know, and it was, and then we rehearsed for almost seven or seven. I'm so bad at numbers. Yeah, I'd say eight <laughs> weeks. It changes every time you tell the story. <laughs> it was basically two months. Yeah, we rehearsed like a Broadway show, and and uh, well, you know. Paul Gemignani was in one room wow. with the Meryl Streep, and we were in another room rewriting Lynn's songs every day. And uh, it was like a little factory. And then, you know, Rob and uh, J John DeLuca and, and their co choreographer, Joey Peasy, were in the other room, and they were, you know, staging the big Lynn's. No I mean, it was really fun. It's funny when I when I uh, talked to Rob Marshall, I said it's so great because and then he wrote there's a rap for for Lynn. And he goes well, they're actually called Patter songs, yeah. and Dick Van yeah. Dyke did it too. Yeah, he did. He did. <laughs> I was like, yeah. you're right. That's yeah. such an education for me. Yeah. But it yeah. is because yeah. at, at that time the English Music Hall was full of Patter songs. Yeah. Uh, so we could we were so lucky that we could write that for Lynn and. and not be anachronistic at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, yeah. it gets out there on Twitter. There's a rap song. Oh my God! Oh, yeah. Mark, I talked to you a long time ago. You gotta yeah, get off the Twitter get off and the message that. boards. We, and according to the before. world now, you can't sing "Baby It's Cold Outside," so yes. I don't know why you pay, <laughs> true. pay any I attention know. to anything. <laughs> <laughs> you have to stop, really, because this is a beautiful uh, movie. Would you, are there any m songs that you especially um, are proud of? Oh, I actually have, a, I have an industry question for you. Um, when award season comes up, mm -hmm. do you choose which songs are sort of in the, when you write this we, many we songs? We were peripherally, peripherally, 
Because we they were put a certain we were part of a certain songs. Yeah, we're part of a discussion, but a studio makes the decision. Right. And, yeah. and, and it's class. weird. And it's like you don't want to. I mean, I'm far too Jewish to even talk about such a thing. <laughs> talk about Kanahura. Yeah. That's what they kept saying. Which song do you think? And I'd say, Kanahura. Poo, poo, poo. I mean, <laughs> you know, so they made the decision. Of course, I disagree. But um, <laughs> no, you don't. No, they, there's two songs. And oh. we'll, we'll see. It's up to the Academy. What are they? Yeah, can you say what songs they are? They're the two songs that deal with the real theme of the movie which, which is, is lost yeah and the first is the lullaby she sings and then the place where lost things go and then the second one is the song that lynn sings triple little light fantastic mm. which is a whole very upbeat way yeah. of saying follow the light and, and yeah. keep that light inside of you and that will keep you know guiding Jeez, you forward moving it forward a lot of dancing on that one too oh my oh god. god they so got it all for me <laughs> did you guys do you guys get to go on set when this is all you, being filmed? we did not when it work? was filmed only the rehearsal part i visited i went and yeah. back to visit but once they're done with the pre-records you out <laughs> we also had, we had to come back to New York to uh, go into rehearsal for Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. Yeah. But then he spent a year, an entire year, scoring the movies. Usually yeah. a movie score is you get around five weeks. In this case, it took a year. How many movies have you scored? Like, around. not songs, but underscore. Since this morning? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I feel I, like... I, I want to say like 60 or so. I know I've lot. worked on around 85 or 90 movies. I've scored... I, I don't know. You see it I've around here. You see it around there. It's crazy. You know, but every movie I ever scored was leading me towards this one. I mean, this yeah. was the ultimate. I, I've said that I'm sure many directors have walked away from a scoring session with me and said, why is the schmuck scoring my movie like it's Mary Poppins movie? <laughs> that was only, <laughs> only Nora Ephron yeah. said that, don't you? <laughs> so finally, I'm scoring a Mary Poppins movie with a director going, I love this. Do more and more. You know, it was... A year of joy scoring this movie. But because also the animation took yeah. a year, so that was part of it too. And you know, they brought back uh, animators for the 2D animation that had re that were no longer, oh, you wow. know, they were had retired. They had worked on Beauty and the Beast and Amazing. Little Mermaid and all of that. It is and we stunning. got the greatest compliment at the, the other night. Yeah. Two different people came up to me <sighs> at different moments who had worked in the heyday. And they both said to me, you know, this isn't just a Disney movie. This is really a Walt Disney movie. Oh, wow. and Walt Disney and would have loved everything mm -hmm. about this and would be so proud. Wow. You know, so that's, I try to remain with just And that. also Richard Sherman, obviously. Yeah. And he was mm -hmm. been a fairy godfather on, on for this. And, and uh, you know, and, and, and he we, tells we, us he loves what we've done. Yeah. And, and I got and right and up in his face. Like, I was like, <laughs> you really mean it? I mean, I wanted to see if there was a little poker player <laughs> tell. And there was a no. eyebrow. He, he seems he genuinely jumped off his chair. Yeah. Like he, was like, oh, he was 23 again in, in yeah. Walt's office. Because we, we did like an interview with each other, and he said, How do you, you know, guys always, people always ask, and I'm sure they ask you, what comes first, the music or lyrics? And we said, Well, the idea comes first. Oh, my He's like, That's, that's it. it. That's what we always say. <laughs> <laughs> these guys, these guys. Look at that. You're the new Sherman Brothers. I love it. I'm into that. So I was thinking, is it less stressful doing a movie musical? Because you your writing is all, has to be sort of locked in. So early, when you're opening a Broadway show, up until well, we, the we last rehearsed. day, they're like saying, they're, you're like considering that's losing the rehearsal sleep. Re and yeah. That's the rehearsal, rehearsal process. Because right. in the rehearsal process, we actually wrote maybe five or six songs for Lynn for that opening wow. spot because they, they weren't quite sure of what the tone of it should be. Mm -hmm. And then it all came back to the very first song we wor wrote. Wow. So, th you know, you w they, Rob really wanted the movie just open gently and, 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 and be be fairly wistful until Mary appears mm -hmm. and the sun comes out, so to speak. But in movies, the, the movie's version of that is reshoots. If they really mm -hmm. felt the song was really tanking or needed to be something else, then that would come up, you know, nine months after you mm -hmm. worked on the movie. But none of that happened. Well, so. we, we had a little bit of fun that we got to add to one song, but luckily it was just in the what else do you guys want to do mm. kind of thing? Not yeah. like, what have you done? No, so Disney, that was really Disney's wonderful. Disney's been fantastic. I mean, I, I, I can't speak highly enough of that experience. Did you, uh, when you're scoring it, are you watching it all the time? I mean, you're, 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 so you actually like know every frame of this movie I know every by heart. frame yeah, but yeah. By, so by heart. And so now when I'm with the actors who we rehearse with and love and have rehearsed with, but now I just know, I mean, I know every single reaction that Emily Blunt gives in this movie, <laughs> and it's so brilliant. The small little things that she does with her face and taking the situation, yeah. I, I could I could write a book. But you know, a lot of that was because of that 
long rehearsal process yeah. because they knew everything. So then when you're on that set, you can focus on the tiniest detail because you know already know it. You already mm -hmm. know it. I mean, I'm th even the chase scenes were taped out on the floor in the rehearsal studio. Wow. Nothing was left wow. to, you know. Rob is incredibly meticulous, incredibly meticulous. Um, was there anything when you saw the finished film? Lynn told me that when he saw the finished film, that he was surprised, he was so moved by Ben Whishaw because he hadn't seen any of, of his work, loved, yeah. but watching his performance was yeah. so amazing. Well, is there anything that you really love or specific things about this movie that well, you? Well, we didn't get, we, we weren't on the set or in the studio when yeah. Dick Van Dyke and Angela oh. Lansbury sang. We were on about Skype and it wasn't just the, you know, we, we Skype. You were on Skype? We, yeah. could li we were listening and watching, yeah. but, but it's not the same. And yeah. they were very busy working, so we were just, and I think it was like in the middle of the night. Yeah, you're like in. We were yeah, literally yeah. up at yeah. three or two thirty wow. in the morning. Yeah. So, so and I wouldn't want Angela Lansbury to FaceTime me in my underwear. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be bad. <laughs> but that's so, uh, that when you when you're in the theater and, and you're watching the movie and they appear, it's that you can't even believe in your yeah. lifetime that that you know. Well, I mean, the a audience, dream is a wish yeah, your heart makes. So the so audience gets just, so excited when Dick yeah. Van Dyke starts to mm -hmm. sing. And can you imagine how exciting it is for us that not only is it exciting to hear him sing, but he's singing something we wrote. And yeah. Angela. You can't even, your, your brain can't process yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, th they're, all, they're all excited that Aaron Tveit sang one of your songs, but Angela oh. Lansbury is someone you grew up with. We love but that. Even though we, and when a movie is really good, you can watch it, and having worked on it, you totally still forget you worked on it, and yeah. you just get into the movie. Yeah. And so the first time, even though I had already scored half the movie, and the rest of the half the score was parts of my score that they were, you know, kind of using temporarily. And the first time I saw it, when it was all over, be especially because of the very last shot and the music that's playing on it, I collapsed into oh. a complete embryonic, ugly cry beyond oh. mm -hmm. all belief. I mean, oh, no, I, it was embarrassing. I think I might have been on the, on the ground. He was. I thought maybe something had happened, yeah. like a stroke. You know, gasping <laughs> for breath, gasping, I mean, it was just so moving. The movie is yeah. so moving, and the fact that Emily, we got uh, to yeah. do it. Emily so calls it a joy bomb, <laughs> as she calls it. Yeah. I love that. And Meryl Streep, too, you wrote her song, uh, Crazy yeah. Number. Yeah. And I love that bathtub song. I love. I can't wait to see it again. <laughs> it is wait. a movie that you really kind of want to see again, and it stands up to many. We'll There's so much, so much more to see every time you see it. And I know the little ways I made use of the melodies from the first film. Yeah. It would take me sitting next to everyone going, I mean, they're so subtle, some of them, that I would love to sit with everyone in America <laughs> and nudge you a little. T tonight's, we have a screening tonight with that Ben, ben Platt, Platt and, and Bette Midler, Midler are hosting. Are hosting. Oh, so. Fantastic. <laughs> look, at you, look at your life. Fancy. Look at your life. Um, I have to ask one non-Mary Poppins question because I know they want to know. I mean, obviously, I love I love so many of your shows, uh, Hairspray. Country What's Japan, happening with Bombshell? Charlie Tony Factory. <laughs> but what is happening with Bombshell? Oh my God. You are right. Do you have fantasies of seeing that those songs? I mean, I mean, I went to that concert, that amazing concert that happened for the Actors Fund. Yeah. And after that night, it felt like this. This give me a show. It's, next season, I mean, get that it up. Was, that was I think it. I ran into you in the men's room and I said, "Get it done." I mean, that was a thrilling night. I mean, that really was a thrilling yeah. night because, uh, you know, as you well know, the, that experience was fraught. And so um, when uh, towards the to have that night where all the, that only yeah. the music was celebrated was special because yeah. I think we actually coined the phrase hate watch. So, I, I, you know, that was sort of a joyous night. I don't know. It's You know what? There are plans to make plans. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Plans yeah. to make <laughs> plans. Lock yourself in a hotel room for <laughs> Three months or whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Caitlin. Yes. I don't want what this ever to end. There's yeah. people watching. All right. So oh. we have to find out if they have any questions. Oh, oh we got lots talents. of questions. Oh, dear. So Rob on Facebook wants to know. Uh, is it Rob Marshall? Debate like? <laughs> no, <laughs> not Rob Marshall. I don't th unless he has a fake last name on Facebook. Uh, he wants to know: Did you write songs for specific performers, or were all the songs inspired by plot points? They were all inspired by mm. plot points, but we had the luxury of having mm -hmm. Emily and Lynn and Ben. Um, they would come over. Uh, primarily, Emily and Lynn would come over, and they would. Um, we could sort of tailor the songs mm. on them. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Wow. That's and awesome. what about, was it, uh, you know, obviously Lynn does a lot of things. He's, he, and in this movie, he's just one of the stars. I think he, that was a great joy for him because yeah. I think 
you know, after the Hamilton was is obviously a mammoth undertaking. And I think the joy of him wanting to come to England with his family and cut that ponytail off and yeah. just be an actor, it was like, he, he thought maybe it was going to be a, more of a vacation. <laughs> but we all know a movie is never a And right. he was very sweet. And the fact that he had the faith in us and the trust in He's us. Like, he was right excited to him. work oh, with no, you guys. He was, that was seven. You know, he was seven. So He's what no, you call a mensch. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> The Puerto Rican mensch. <laughs> <laughs> I love this. You, you touched on this a little bit before, but this is you can go more in depth with this. Alec on Facebook wants to know, is it different writing for an original show like Hairspray than a sequel to like a classic? Classic. Like, what's You're that? You're always writing from character and story, so uh, there's no uh, there's no difference. I don't think there's any difference. You you mm -hmm. really it all starts with the story and the character. And it's a sort of chicken and egg. Is it easier to write songs that already a style has already been set for, mm -hmm. or is it you know make it harder? Because obviously in this case we're we're going to be compared to the greatest song score that was ever written mm -hmm. for a movie. So I kind of know what you know what I'm going to face, but um. <laughs> You know, is that easier or mm -hmm. harder? I don't know. Mm -hmm. Do is Alex? Alec. Uh, Alec. I'll have to get back to Alec. With <laughs> Do you have any uh, any more uh, swinging sixties musicals in you? No, we have a Roaring Twenties one coming. Roaring Twenties. Yeah. What's that? We, we've some been, like we're it some hot. like it hot. Oh right! Oh my God! Of course, I forgot. Yeah, it's been fun because we're working with this fantastic playwright who wrote The Inheritance. That's yeah. in London, named Matthew Lopez. Yeah. I mean, he's it's been he's. He's he's uh, sort of opened it up for us, and and also Casey Nicholas. Yeah, yeah. and this real, is fascinating. We've had a nice time doing it. But there yeah. already was a musical based yeah. on yeah, yeah, it's strange that yeah. we you know it seems that every Sugar. single thing we do we we it's iconic. It's got to have some <laughs> other thing that's already <laughs> looking over its shoulder. I don't know why we keep doing that, but uh, yeah, it is strange to write a. Mu I don't know that it's ever been done that a second musical has been created for oh, something wild, but but wild but, party I yeah, guess the, oh the wild things. party yeah you would know these but things. right in a week of each other how strange <laughs> is how that? did that happen <laughs> yeah. uh yeah well i'm excited for that yeah it's been yeah, fun that, to that's write. a great it's really fun to write really yeah fun, yeah and people love drag on the Broadway, and there's a little drag so in there. So much of it, yeah. And blondes and drag, yeah. and yeah. Soon we'll all be. But you know, they, they they came to us with a couple of changes to the the show in in a certain ways that I'm not at liberty to say. Okay. That Refracted really made us it. go, oh, that's a great idea, and it's still some like it hot, but. To, I hate to use this expression, but we're looking at it through a modern lens. Oh. <laughs> so you know, because the subject that's an of it. You used the but you had quotes in oh, that. You know. You just did. Uh, you yeah, said I that. Know. <laughs> oh God, I was on a phone call yesterday and I said to something, what about the optics about that? And I was like, <laughs> oh I can't oh believe God. I just said that. Oh <laughs> What else? What I else? I love Caitlin? that. All right, let's do one more question. Okay. And a lot of people want to know just what is your guys' story? How'd you meet? Why'd you start working oh my together? Oh, God. Such a long story. Wait, didn't you see the Tonys when the, yeah. when the Hairspray won? Yeah. Mm -hmm. we but now he's happily married to someone else. And, we've, we've and worked he has a fabulous and, relationship. And I have a fabulous Irish Very boyfriend. young. Very <laughs> young. Oh, my Lord. No, I, he has Brian. I have I have Brian. He has Lou. And, but but we you famously were a couple. Yeah, yeah yes. for 35 years. Yeah. Right. But we still meet every Every day at nine, and and he goes home at five, and I, you know, and that's it. So, but and that's been, I, I think that's probably of all the things in our in my life, I'm most proud of of that relationship that we've we've been able to. Uh, Work, continue working yeah. together. This might be one of the questions I'm asked very often. People yeah. al always say, ask me about your relationship yeah. mm -hmm. because people don't Are know confused. if you're still yeah. together <laughs> and they're yeah. confused yeah. and. They well, don't we see just all the now, now the world husband. knows. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, creative partners only. But um, but I'm sure that history like I mean, informs I everything. Them, I, I was in an interview the other day, and I called him my soulmate. I mean, yeah, yeah. I, I happen to be lucky enough to have two soulmates. Oh, <laughs> we should That's all beautiful. be so lucky. I know Aww. how lucky I am. Well, it would really sucked if you guys weren't talking to each other because I need these what? musicals. Ah. <laughs> Keep cranking them out. It would be bad for everyone. <laughs> Keep <laughs> cranking them out. Uh, so what? Mary Poppins opens, I believe, a week from Friday, right? Isn't yeah. it? A week from and Wednesday. And the soundtrack comes out this weekend. <laughs> get the soundtrack. Get into it. I love it. Yeah. It's going to be so good. I can't wait to hear it. So yeah, I'm, I've just been reading it, not listening yeah. to it. I have this book, but not the music. Yeah. So uh, it thank you, guys. With Thanks for you. being here. Sure. It's always, always a pleasure. And you. you look very nice. Oh, you both thanks. look very nice. Jenny Craig. 
<laughs> I've been on Jenny Craig more than Mr. Craig. I tell you, ladies and gentlemen, go else. see Mary Poppins <laughs> Returns. It's not a remake. The nineteenth on the nineteenth. The nineteenth. It's out in theaters on the nineteenth, and everyone's gonna go see it. It's like the must. The, mm -hmm. It's the thing to do Aww. this Christmas. I mean, it is like the holiday movie. You'll like it. You will. You really will. You don't know, even. It's, don't it's even, real. Don't even go in like this. Just. No, it's magic. It really is. Oh. And that's what I, I told everyone the minute I came back from the screening. I you left feel like for a couple hours again. and I came back. It makes and I was you feel like, like a kid again. Yeah, it really is. It's and like it an reminded me of Popeye. Lift. <laughs> but, you know, I'm telling you, that it really did bring out that kid thing in me, that energy, that oh, excitement. That's nice so, to hear. Uh, congratulations. I'm very excited for you, too. Hey, Caitlin, why don't you take us out? Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in tomorrow. We talk to Ward Horton of Torch Song.